Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys Star Wars 1 6 scale figure unboxing and review. Now today we are taking a look at our first Bad Batch figure being none other than Echo. I'm a huge fan of Echo, I enjoyed the show for what it was, so I'm pretty excited to get him out here. I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They do have installment plans and a points-based reward system. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new review goes live on the channel. As for the box art, it's the typical Star Wars fare, an image of the figure front and center, a wraparound banner done in red, I guess to signify the Bad Batch, plus another image of the figure, this time without the bucket. On the side of the box, another product shot, this time with his droid mallet, on the back, a bunch of warnings and legal info. Now, fingers crossed Hunter isn't too far behind. Thank you, Hot Toys, for this little teaser image. It's going to be a slow burn to build the team, but fingers crossed eventually we get the whole lineup. I'm talking tech, I'm talking crosshair, I'm talking wrecker, and yes, I'm even talking Omega. I wouldn't be surprised if they wait for season two, but we'll have to wait and see. First in-hand impressions of Echo though, pretty darn positive. What we are going to do now is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Starting off with the display base first, it's rectangular, the typical Star Wars style, up front, Star Wars and Echo etched into a metal nameplate. Then up top, an image of Echo's helmet done in red, the Bad Batch, and luckily this is removable. If you decide you don't want Echo standing on his own helmet, Simply take it off, it's a sticker. Underneath that, you've got the usual imperial style flooring, this time done in a bit of a brown tinge. Up top, a regular crotch grabber. We do get his helmet and an unmasked head sculpt. Starting off with the helmet first, I really like it. It's super angular. Now, we'll discuss the paint applications a bit later, but I do want to talk about the functionality. You can slide off this back piece. That's actually what the ball joint neck connector slides onto. But if you'll remember, in the show, his helmet was a little funky. It would go over his actual head, but he has this Lobot-style computer attached permanently. So that's the piece that would be sticking out the back and would fill out the rest of the helmet. But obviously in 1-6 scale that's not possible, so this piece is supposed to be this one, but it does look a little different. He does have these electrode pieces up top, then a very harrowing looking gaunt to Mura Morrison. It's nicely painted, I like the skin texture, the likeness I guess is there from certain angles, it's a more realistic take on Echo. Could I ever see myself using this head sculpt as incredible and well done as it is? No, I don't think so. I do want to stress, not because it's bad, I literally just called it incredible, it's one of the best head sculpts in the lineup. It just kind of creeps me out a little, so I'm not going to go with it. I'm going with the helmet. He does come with a backpack, fully sculpted and detailed on both sides. Couple of canisters. It's really colourful. You've got this panel right here, some yellow stripes and a bunch of red. Then up top, two antennas that are keyed to only go in a certain way. And yes, they're real metal. This thing does have a tendency to fall off, so I'm glad they're metal. Otherwise, they might have snapped. You do get multiple swap out pieces for his droid arm. I actually don't remember these. Discuss that more later on. This one kind of looks like C-3PO. It's got a bit of a rusty look with some gold sections, but it does have a regular wrist peg and a swap out hand for a trigger finger. If you want to though, and I'm not sure why you would, you can bring in this telescopic style extension piece, plug this on and... Now his arm is a lot longer, this is really weird, something about it makes me feel all kinds of queasy, there's some rust on certain sections, overall it looks okay, but I will definitely not be using this in my display. I know it's not really a big deal, but having a super long C-3PO style arm, I don't know, just rubs me the wrong way. You do have a much shorter version with no hand and some little doohickeys up top, little buzz saws, some pincers and whatever the hell this thing is. It's got a blue screen and it's painted in the same way as the arm, meaning 
It looks slightly rusty with some black shading. This one is really funky. It kind of has a super unique design. There's a claw on one end with multiple jointed pieces, but that's not all. You can slide off the top piece, bring in this cable thing, I guess? Slide this piece on, and it's a wire, you can pose it. I'm not sure what this is supposed to do, but if you like options, because don't forget, they're always a good thing, you can totally put this on. I'm making a real mess of this accessory segment, I'm sorry. You also get the droid mallet. I love the paint here, it looks absolutely filthy. You've got more rust, a bunch of filth down below, and it does move. Plus, those pistons are painted with the rust work as well. This little guy should be pretty familiar. It's the tried and true Arc Trooper Blaster Pistol. It's relatively thin, kind of looks stylized and cartoony, but works totally fine for me. I like the sculpt, it's crisp and clean. Plus, the finish is stunning. It's gunmetal with a bunch of silver dry brushing up on top. Then lastly, we get two extra hands, making for three in total. Now, I'm not counting the C-3PO hands, just the human side. I do like the sculpt. This one's pointing. This one's a trigger finger, but why don't we have closed fists? Why don't we have gesturing hands? This, in my opinion, isn't nearly enough. What we are going to do now, though, is get Echo himself out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that, except for the backpack and his helmet and his blaster pistol. Okay, okay, some accessories. He looks really good. Is this Echo? Oh, sorry, Echo, channeling my inner New Zealander, because I'm from Australia, where Kinda neighbours, you're not here to hear that. This figure looks great. I love the aesthetic, I love the colour scheme, the proportions are good. He does of course have one droid arm and one normal arm plus those swap outs. Pretty curious to try them out and see how it changes the overall look and aesthetics of the figure. If I had to rank this guy among the modern Hot Toys clones, where would he be? Well, for now, he ranks pretty highly. Maybe not above Captain Rex and Commander Cody, but definitely above standard 501st Trooper. Up close and personal, kicking things off with the bucket first. This is such a cool design, I'm all for it, and in 1-6 scale, in this realistic style, it absolutely works here. It's painted well, the sculpt is impeccable, of course it is. I do like the 99 up top, You've also got a glossy visor, plus a teeny bit of red on the teeth for a pop of colour. Now, don't forget, you can, of course, remove the helmet from the back piece for when he's holding it. And if you are interested in seeing what he looks like with the unhelmeted head sculpt on, while I still think that this is such a creepy head sculpt, it still looks like Tamura Morrison, and I guess it's a close enough approximation of Echo in live action. You can also peep the skin tone neck, because, yeah, he has one. You have this kind of sock collar piece that slides on down underneath the collar, so when you have the helmet on, that neck isn't visible. The skin tone match is pretty good between the neck and the head sculpt, although around the side, there is a seam line. It's kind of ugly. Around the back, we do of course have his backpack. Still love the finish with the lighter grey shading that kind of gives it that chalky, scratched up aesthetic like the Clone Wars and the Bad Batch has. It also attaches magnetically, plus you've got this foam pad around the back. So when you slide it on, even if it moves around, fingers crossed, shouldn't get any scratching. Back around the front, he's wearing a fabric ribbed bodysuit, just like all the other clones, but it's not identical. This time, there's a proper collar, you can see the kind of stitch line down the middle, and unfortunately, there's pleather. Hot Toys, why is this pleather? This panel right here, it looks okay for now, but who knows how long that's going to last. As we know, pleather over time doesn't fare so well. The armor, though, is really cool. It's bespoke to Echo. I love this ab piece, kind of giving him some ab definition, making him look super chonky. It's also got a bunch of scratching, multiple different colors of scratching. There's this lighter gray, some black, and of course the red striping. You do have the skull. Overall, the color scheme and the finish being super matte looks really good. But then again, you can see that, you know it looks good. The shoulder pad, more red, coming down to the bicep armor, no red. 
then the gauntlet, more red, then down to the hand, grey once again. You do have a communicator, fully sculpted and painted. Whereas on the other side, he's got the little droid socket piece that can switch out for some other options, if you so choose. Such as, for instance, the C-3PO style droid arm. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but did Echo actually switch out the little piece on his right side in the show? Because I definitely don't remember that. If he did, please let me know down below. This one looks cool. I like the kind of coppery, rusty look, plus the gold accents. And if you wanted to, it's actually relatively simple to swap out. It's on a straight peg, so you can simply bring in one of the other options, slide it on, and away you go. This one is also a C-3PO style arm, but the hand is gone. And instead, he's got a bunch of little doohickeys sticking out the side. Then we've got this big honking thing right here. It kind of looks like a gun with this drum down below, but... I don't think it is, I reckon it's some kind of grabbing tool. These pieces on the end are articulated, but it feels a little fragile. Now it does peg in in the same way, simply on that straight peg, but the colour for the grey is slightly different, just like the C-3PO arm, to the rest of his armour. Then lastly, the droid Mallet of Doom. This one is the weirdest one of the bunch in my opinion, but... I can't help myself, I really like it. The tan finish with the dirt and grime and the rust work, plus it can extend to activate maximum mallet power. I don't know what he's supposed to be doing with this, but this function is kind of addictive. I like it so much, I'm gonna leave it on. He does have a rubbery floating belt which can move up and down, plus some leather style pouches on the back. No, they're not pleather, they're sculpted plastic, but they're painted well enough that they look like pleather. The Karma is all fabric, except for the red pleather straps, unfortunately. He also has a holster for his blaster pistol, and unlike previous clones, this slides in and sits in place rather securely. Coming down to the legs, more fabric for the ribbed bodysuit, so pretty good for posing. You also have some sliding thigh armor pieces that can move around. I also love the discs that kind of call back to C-3PO's design, just like the swap out arm. Then down below for the boots, they kind of look like standard clone trooper boots, but with the grey armour plating, and some sculpted in tread down below. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have Echo alongside Phase 2 Captain Rex. Number one, I love this, they look so darn good together, but number two, Echo is a little bit shorter. He also only has one arm, the other's been replaced by droid pieces. It's a completely different look, a completely different colour of armour, but as I said, they still mesh well. Next up, another animated character turned live action figure. It's Ahsoka Tano in her Clone Wars outfit. I absolutely love this Ahsoka. Does she compliment Echo? Yeah, I think she does. Will I be displaying these two in close proximity in the display? Oh yes, you bet I will. Going over articulation, do bear in mind that this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful. Starting off with the head sculpt, it's on a double ball peg, both at the base of the helmet and another at the base of the neck, looking forward and back, swivel and pivot side to side. The arms do go up to there, they will go forward and back, butterfly joint at the shoulder that also hinges up and down. Swivel at the bicep, a double bend on ratchets on one side, but of course a single bend on the other, plus a regular 1-6 scale wrist peg. The torso does crunch forward and back just a little, hindered by the armour, swivel and pivot. The legs do go forward on ratchets to there, going out on soft hinges to there, swivel at the upper thigh, Double bend at the knee that only gets you to about 90, because of course the armor does collide. Then a double ball peg down here for the ankle. Moving on to the three cool and three annoying things. The first annoying thing is the backpack. Hot Toys, your magnets aren't strong enough. As soon as you try and pose him and you knock the backpack, yeah, it's either going to fall off entirely or it's going to get out of alignment. Really annoying. I would suggest you dial in the pose first, then to save yourself the headache, pop the backpack on later. The second annoying thing is, Hot Toys, really pleather? What's with this compulsion of including at least one piece of pleather with every figure, but there's more than one here. This panel is pleather, these red sections are pleather too. Fingers crossed they survive the test of time, but 
there was really no reason for them to even be pleather. It's not like we ever saw this guy in live action and were like, oh yes, that's leather, it has to be pleather in one sixth scale. This could have been fabric, and that could have been something else entirely. The third annoying thing, and don't get me wrong, I really like the mechanism of sliding off the helmet from the back piece, but when you try and have him looking down, sometimes it's not quite secure enough, and it slides off from the back piece. The first cool thing is the sock piece that's included to either cover up the neck or be removed, so when you have the unhelmeted head sculpt on, he's got a skin tone neck. This is something I've been hoping to see forever, because it doesn't really make sense for the outfit to continue up underneath the head sculpt. Hopefully, going forward, Hot Toys keep doing this. The second cool thing is that you can switch out his right droid arm for these various attachments. Now, as I said earlier, I don't actually remember him doing this in the show. Maybe I missed it because I fell asleep in one of the more boring episodes, but nevertheless, I still appreciate the option having the switch outs. The third cool thing is that both of his antennas are real metal. This one looks really thin and flimsy if it was plastic and the first annoying thing was this backpack was flimsy and falls off, then yeah, maybe I'd be worried about it breaking, but they're both metal. They feel nice and sturdy. Wrapping up on Hot Toys Bad Batch Echo. Okay, going into this, even though I despise the Bad Batch show, I really like Echo. He's got a very interesting character arc. He started off in the Clone Wars as an ARC trooper. We saw his journey getting there. Then, unfortunately, he was killed. Oh, no, but no, no, he wasn't killed. He was captured by the Separatists, plugged into a machine, and used as a data bank for his info on the Republic. After that... The Bad Batch comes in, he's rescued, he's turned into a member of the team. Enter this figure. Now, you may be thinking, Justin, did you make all that stuff up if you haven't seen the show? No, I didn't make it up. Go and watch the show, trust me. This guy is a really cool character. I also love him in figure format. Hot Toys, y'all killed it. Starting off with the body... Well proportioned, well built, the joints are stiff and sturdy, plus the swap out arm gimmick. Even though I don't remember seeing it, I still really like it here. You've got multiple options, it's entirely up to you. You do have the head sculpt that kind of has that lobot thing around the back, very Tamura Morrison, but also very not. It's kind of creepy, the skin texture is excellent, it might just be one of their best clone trooper head sculpts ever. The armor itself... Also nicely painted, ton of scratching, ton of weathering. As I said just before, I love this figure. Would I recommend him if you're a Clone Wars slash Bad Batch fan? Yeah, <laughs> go ahead and get him. If you're not though, and you don't even know who this guy is, maybe it's a skip for you. Go ahead and save that pre-order or first batch money for a main character that you do know from Star Wars proper. If you are heading down to the description, I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is down there. They do have installment plans and a points-based reward system. While you're down there, hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.